because Ustaz Dr. Layat um, Ali Muhammad um, Omar. He studied in the Islamic Sciences in Tarim, Rubat Islamic Studies Institute in Yemen. He worked at the local mosque as an imam for about 10 years since 2004. He volunteers at various family service centers and the Singapore Muslim Women's Association known as PBIS as a resource person and a counselor for pre-divorce cases and issues relating to youth. He's an active member of the religious rehabilitation group counseling detainees with radical ideologies and religious extremism. He's also the managing director of two established organizations in Singapore, the Atawasol in Sunny Singapore and Human Connection SG since 2017. Can we have Ustad Dr. Layat please? Uh, Usta, I think you are um, muted. You need to unmute. Ah, yeah. Uh, you're muted again. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Okay. Sorry for the delay. Um. So a very good afternoon for everybody. Um, uh, today, I think uh, what have been uh, I've been hearing it so much so of importance to me, and I learned a few uh, good great deals that I wish I could, I, I could uh, talk about it later on. But uh, as you see, the title that I I, I chose for myself today uh, is uh, is letting go, and um, well, letting God is the right word to say, but. Uh, here, um, uh, I, I, I'm seeing a very interesting discussion on uh, spirituality and both um, um, both things that is close to the heart, which is uh, the endemic that is happening today. So um, uh, I have chosen again here my title because uh, basically spirituality uh, is to, uh, to, to understand the religion itself. And uh, perhaps uh, the title itself um, give give up uh, an understanding that uh, we uh, we as Muslim uh, put trust in him. So perhaps uh, I would like to share on the Islamic perspective of uh, what it is. So as you can see in the screen right now, uh, we are um, um, what we see is whatever uh, life brings into us. We 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 have school exams. We have. Uh, a new job, and all these are the, the perspective of every human, I would say. Uh -huh. So I suppose and uh, every human share these uh, differences of uh, di difference of emotions and and happenings, uh, like like what you you read on top there, uh, which is uh, well you can say the baby uh, uplifting our children, making bad uh, and in, making a bad investment and so 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 forth. So um, as people of faith, we have a di different perspective of how we look at it. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad that um, uh, Mr. Long was um, uh, talking about how we can expand the understanding of how uh, we can, uh, we can uh, get out of this, uh, um, this uh, coping with, uh, with pandemic when we, when, we, when we bring in uh, religious into a certain lens of uh, paradigm, I would I, I say. So, um, these are the things that I, I would say we fall back on the teaching of faith into uh, into guiding our our actions. Uh -huh. So, um, what I would like to uh, uh, make an understanding here is how we Muslims uh, believe in uh, uh, what makes a Muslim. I would say, yeah. So, the testification of faith is something which is important. Therefore. It is a, a stand that a Muslim make uh, to, to say that he is a Muslim when he says that he bear witness that no one deserves to be worshipped except Allah. And he also witnessed that Muhammad is the messenger of, of God. And there is no compulsion in that uh, statement. Meaning to say when he has that, that is the stand that that person takes on. So um, uh, this, is, uh, this is a Muslim and Islam is the religion, of course. So uh, in, in the word that we understand, Islam is, uh, it, it means uh, submission or to surrender uh, to the will of God. So this is very important statement, I would say, to, uh, to apprehend the whole understanding of my, of my, my presentation here. Because uh, 
uh, when when we talk about uh, Muslim, it is something that he he inclined on and he he submit himself to to everything that uh, God has uh, willed upon upon him on whatever occasion it is. So. So um, the word Islam itself, the root, uh, come from the word or the understanding of salam, which is um, peace. But that is not what uh, the, the, the emphasize or what we want to emphasize here. Because uh, the peace is being determined through the submission of God. So when you submit to God, that would be something that you, uh, you are saying that uh, submission to God only entails uh, worship, uh, worship to God. It does not, uh, uh, it encompasses uh, uh, submitting to any aspect of our life. So meaning the submission of God is, is, not, is not about the life that is being submitted to God, but it's anything that is, uh, uh, that is proclaiming um, um, uh, purposes in, sen in the sense of um, happiness. So a person is willing to give that up, to sacrifice, and that is the understanding of the, the, the submission to God here. So it does not um, um, pertain to the matter of life and death only, but includes the pleasure and challenges in life that one will go through. So for a Muslim who is God, God is always referred to as Allah, and God is the creator and the sustainer of the universe. So who creates everything and... Uh, and everything here for 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 what we what we are facing is there is a reason for it. So Muslim uh, believe that he created humankind with simple purposes to uh, to, uh, to worship him. So and he also sent a messenger or messengers, I would say, uh, to guide and to 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 fulfill these purposes of worshiping uh, worshiping him. So uh, what I'm trying to bring in understanding here is such that when a Muslim get that purposes in life where submitting to the will of God is something uh, in, in, in act of worship, therefore we are looking at uh, uh, the submission to understand the fact that that comes from God. I will um, um, come into that a little bit more. So... Um, as I mentioned just now, God sent messengers, and these messen this messengers uh, uh, um, includes uh, a Prophet Adam, a Prophet Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and uh, and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or may peace be upon him. So they all taught a consistent message about God, and by affirming His greatness, and He is the Creator, and guiding people to worship Him alone. So. These are the purpose, or these are the, the purpose of the messenger being sent during uh, the time uh, or the, the different times here. So the basic concept has always been uh, 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 resonate with people, uh, natural understanding of God, the Almighty. So, so uh, what Muslim belief that is embedded in life uh, is such that whatever problem or issue uh, of a Muslim, when he is facing it, he returns back to God. So as I mentioned from the first few uh, um, uh, presentation that I, I made from the first few slides, it, it, it makes an understanding that God is everything and God is the one that create that whatever that happens in your life. So, so faith has molded that into, uh, into uh, an understanding that uh, there is nothing happen, there is nothing that happened in life of a Muslim except that his religion has a solution. Has a solution, uh, solution to it, and why? And why is that way? So uh, the ultimate goal for a Muslim is that he wants to reach the contentment of God. Because as I mentioned from the, the the few slides before this, is that it is God Mighty. It is God the Almighty that uh, that uh, that that is the Creator. In order to please Him, to content Him, therefore we do or we, we act to what he has ordained upon us. So, and that is also the, the, the mission, or I would say the ultimate goal for a Muslim is to be amongst the dwellers of paradise. So, but all these um, um, wanting and, and, uh, and goals, uh, God also warned us in the Quran, he says, do people think that they will be left alone because they say we believe and will not be tested? So that is something that God prompted us to make an understanding that you won't be going to paradise 
just like that. So you will, you will be tested. And what is the test? And, and in, in another um, verse, Allah, uh, God says that, do you think that you will, you will enter paradise without such trials as came to those who pass away before you? Um, having to understand the one that comes before us would be the people or the, 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 the people from the guidance of Jesus, the guidance of Moses and so forth. Because those people, they are all also tested. And we also see um, trials and tribulation during that, that, that time. So God also mentioned that they will be afflicted with severe poverty and diseases. And they will, they, they will shaken and they will even be messengers amongst them that believe along with them and they will say when will the help of God or when will the when will the, will the help of Allah come meaning says it's just to the extent of giving up and God says yes certainly the help of Allah is near so how do we Muslim respond to things like when we receive news on a certain calamity such as the virus befalling upon himself or his loved ones, or when we hear that we cannot uh, gather in the sacred place or the most safest place on earth, I would say, where we understand as the masjid or the house of God, the mosque. And uh, how do we respond to uh, when we cannot visit our elderly family members or, or, or our relatives, especially during festive seasons and, and also weekly gatherings and so on? How do we respond to, uh, respond to, to, to all this? And the Quran, uh, the, uh, the instruction from this is such that, and he says, God, God says, and we will surely test you with something of fear and hunger, of loss, of wealth, and lives, and fruits, but give glad tiding to the patients. There's a cause here to the patient here. So who, yani those people that practice patient, when disaster strikes them, they say, indeed, we belong to Allah, and indeed to Him will we return. This is the kind of um, um, response that we have. So a Muslim definitely have to have a patient, uh, as in patient in trials that he uh, that he received from God, and as he knows that he will never, yani God will never forsake him, nor will Allah uh, burden him with trial that is more than what he can handle. And a Muslim, or as a Muslim, he should should not also overreact. And at the same time, should not be oblivious uh, about situation and do nothing. And these are all a, a, a clause to say, because if I want to um, expand this, it's going to be more than what it is. But I, I'm saying that a Muslim should not overreact in a sense. He should go and do whatever that has been ordained. Yeah, it, that includes to help the family, to help the people around him, because those are the ones that can reach the contentment of God. And therefore, the goal again to be uh, in, to be amongst the dwellers in paradise would be achieved if he reacts to this in in a way that uh, he 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 helped the others and not be keeping quiet about it and not overreacting over it also. So a Muslim also takes the necessary means and to rely as in to really incline himself upon God, upon Allah. So these approaches are heavily. Uh, emphasize in Islam. And therefore, uh, I would say that uh, these are the things that has been uh, that has been uh, uh, that has been emphasized uh, for Muslims. So, before I end a bit, I'm going to give a little bit of an analogy. This comes from a hadith, a hadith uh, tradition of Prophet uh, Muhammad uh, um, So that that there, there is a day. Uh, I will just read from here. You will say that one day Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him, notice that a Bedouin leaving his camel by the tree without tying it. Meaning to say a Bedouin is a person from the rural. So when he came around and then he just leave the camel without even tying it. Meaning to say he, that camel can just go away. So the prophet go to him and ask him, you know, why didn't you, why didn't you tie the camel? And then the Bedouin answer, oh, I, I put my trust in God. So without tying it, he just put the trust in God and let it go. The Prophet then said to him, you must first tie your camel and then put your trust in Allah. So having said that, this is the whole assumption of what I am trying to put on. As Muslims, 
we believe, we trust in Allah. But there must be an option for us to try to do an action out of what before it yeah, need to be uh, to, to be to know that the consequences is, is, is more than it. We need to put on action first and then we rely on God. So um, uh, again, before conclusion and uh, before concluding, I would say that life is a journey of all kinds of experience and, and emotions, and we all humans have that. So uh, on the perspective of, of religious, uh, we, we, have, uh, we have this big thing called submit, submission to Allah or submission to God, uh, to God's plan exactly. So whatever that has come to, to, be the, uh, to be the one thing or to be the will of God, we accept that a full, uh, fully, uh, fulfilling whatever that has been uh, planned or bestowed upon us. And we strive to make the best out of uh, any situation that presents itself based on what Allah and his messenger, Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, have taught us upon that we put on to action. And Muslim trust to give, uh, to give uh, Muslim trust Allah to give us the best, meaning to say God loves us. That is, uh, uh, that is uh, something that uh, can be elaborated into a, a, a very uh, long um, explanation where he loves those who trust in him and those who don't even trust in, trust in him. So that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, uh, gives, uh, and he always gives the best for the humankind. And, uh, and it's how we take it and it's how we, uh, we submit to his will. So Muslim will definitely let go and let God take its action or his action into whatever that happened or be willed upon us. And yeah, I think that's about it that I want to um, share here.